Hello and good evening. I'm Shuhaida Arifin. Welcome to News at 10. Melaka AMNO will let Yang di Pertuan Negeri Tun Muhammad Ali Rustam make a decision after the Barisan Nasional led state government technically collapsed due to four lawmakers withdrawing their support for the Chief Minister Datuk Seri Sulaiman Mat Ali. Melaka AMNO liaison chairman Datuk Seri Abdul Rauf Yusof said it is now up to Tun Muhammad Ali to decide whether to dissolve the state legislative assembly. Kita menerima tekanan politik di atas kehilang kepercayaan oleh keempat-empat mereka yang berada di dalam kerajaan yang menguruskan sepanjang masa dalam era COVID ini. Saya juga melihat bahawa untuk kita meneruskan kelestian ini, Perhubungan Amnu Negeri menyerahkan atas kebijaksanaan Tuan Yang Terutama Tun untuk menjerai untuk menyelesaikan atau meleraikan kemelut politik yang sedang melanda di negeri Melaka. Meanwhile, Istana Melaka said it has yet to receive a letter from any political party seeking an audience with Tun Muhammad Ali over claims that the current state government has lost its majority to govern the state. The Yang Di-Pertuan Negeri's Special Secretary, Datuk Nur Azmi Ahmad Said Tun Muhammad Ali, is currently undergoing self-quarantine for two weeks starting 30th September following close contact with COVID-19 positive individuals. Four state assemblymen, former Chief Minister Datuk Suri Idris Harun, Datuk Nur Azman Hassan, Datuk Nur Hizam Hassan Bakti and Datuk Nur Effendi Ahmad today declared they have lost confidence in Datuk Sulaiman's leadership and had withdrawn support for him. Meanwhile, Datuk Suri Sulaiman has expressed his disappointment with the actions of the four state assemblymen after they withdrew their support for him. The chief minister describes their behaviour as inappropriate as the country is still battling the COVID-19 pandemic. Sudah pastilah dalam keadaan yang agak sukar hari ini. Masing-masing seperti mana semua tahu, kita berusaha untuk memulihkan kerajaan ini terutama ekonomi dan juga kesihatan dan mereka juga membuat kerja yang sama tapi akhirnya mereka meruntuhkan di mana kita baru balik ke pasar yang ketiga jadi tujuan dan matlamat kita untuk kerjasama bagi memulihkan ekonomi dan juga kesihatan negeri mereka sendiri yang merobek Individuals who cannot be given the COVID-19 vaccine due to medical-related factors can apply for a special digital certificate or vaccination exemption at My Sejahtera through the District Health Office PKD. Health Minister Kairi Jamaluddin, however, said they would have to get a verification on their condition from registered medical practitioners. Sebagai contoh, jika seorang didapati menghidapi alahan kepada vaksin jenis Pfizer, Vaksin jenis lain seperti Sinovac boleh diberikan. Sekiranya individu tersebut disahkan tidak boleh mengambil sebarang jenis vaksin COVID-19 atas sebab-sebab perubatan, individu tersebut perlu mematuhi SOP dengan lebih ketat secara kendiri seperti memakai pelitup muka, memastikan penjarakan fizikal kerap mencuci tangan dan lain-lain disebabkan individu tersebut lebih berisiko untuk mendapatkan jangkitan COVID-19. Elaborating further, Kairi said they would also be required to go to the district health office and submit a special form, which is an assessment slip on suitability of receiving COVID-19 vaccine for patients with certain health problems, which had been verified by the medical specialist. He said the digital certificate through My Sujatara will be obtained within a week if the application submitted is complete and meet the stipulated conditions. On another note, Kairi said a recommendation has been made to the government to proceed with the heterologous vaccination plan or the use of a vaccine different from the original vaccine received by an individual through the administration of booster doses starting this month. He said the recommendation was made by the technical subcommittee chaired by the directors of the Institute of Clinical Research, National Institute of Health and IH, Dr. Kalerasu M. Parasami to the COVID-19 vaccine supply access Guarantee Special Committee JKJAV at a meeting last week. 
dan jawatan kuasa kecil uh, teknikal yang dipengerusikan oleh Dr. Kalairasu Perasami, uh, pengarah Institut uh, Pendidikan Klinikal uh, telah pun mengesyorkan kepada jawatan kuasa jaminan akses vaksin untuk booster dos ataupun untuk dos penggalak yang kita akan mulakan pada bulan Oktober ini. Kairi also said that a study on the safety of the heterologous vaccination has already been implemented and it is recommended that the government to continue with the heterologous vaccination program. Prior to this, the government had considered the method of mixing two vaccines as part of the implementation of the National COVID-19 Immunization Program PICK to increase antibody neutralization and the effectiveness of the vaccines as done by many other countries. A total of 62.5% school students have received their first dose of COVID-19 vaccines as of yesterday. According to Deputy Education Minister 1, Dato Dr. Mahang Sun, the country has 2,535,165 students aged 12 to 17, out of which 1,584,779 or 62.5% are or percent have received their first dose while 180 8,003 or 7.4% have completed both doses of COVID-19 vaccines. Ini sebenarnya program vaksinasi ini um, dikendalikan oleh uh, CITF, uh, PBB dan uh, dengan sokongan penuh daripada KPM. Ya? Jadi kita akan memastikan uh, segala sokongan yang diperlukan dari segi uh, sukarelawan akan kita uh, berikan. Speaking after visiting SMK Taman Tasik Ampang today, Dato Dr. Mah also said that face-to-face -face teaching and learning will continue even if only one student in a class shows up. He added that students who choose to study from home will be given teaching and learning modules to ensure their learning continues and said that their parents must come to school to pick up the modules from the teachers. A total of 143,000 students nationwide, except in Kedah and Johor, have started face-to-face -face school sessions today and yesterday after all schools in the country were closed for about six months due to the spread of COVID-19. Senior Education Minister Dato Dr. Razi Jiden said of the total 94,000 students from schools in Group B, Negeri Sembilan, Pahang, Melaka, Selangor, Putrajaya, Kuala Lumpur, Pulau Pinang, Perak, Sabah, Perlis, Sarawak and Labuan began their face-to-face -face school sessions today. The remaining were students in Group A involving Terengganu, Kelantan and Langkawi who returned to school yesterday. The senior minister said overall, the attendance rate is very good and procedures and guidelines for school reopening were also well complied with. Meanwhile, he said the response from parents was very encouraging. However, some of them still felt that this was not the right time to send their children back to school as they are worried about the COVID-19 situation. Commenting further, Dato Dr. Razi said no action would be taken against parents and they have the option not to send their children to school but they have to notify the school in advance. He added that the attendance rate of CJ Pelajaran Malaysia SPM candidates and CJL Tinggi Persekolahan Malaysia STPM Semester 2 students was also very good. The Technical Committee overseeing the reopening of the Malaysia-Singapore border has agreed to the Standard Operating Procedures SOP proposal by the state government. Johor Menteri Besar Datuk Hasni Muhammad said that discussion with Singapore on the border reopening could start once Senior Minister give a green light. He said the health ministry would decide on a date for the proposal to be presented to the senior ministers. Ask if the number of cases in Singapore would affect efforts to reopen the border, Dato Hasni said it would not. Uh, kalau awal-awal dulu, uh, bila RTL di, ditanggungkan atau PCA tidak dilaksanakan, kerana waktu itu kita masih menunggu lebih banyak lagi uh, kaedah-kaedah kita berdepan dengan uh, COVID-19 ni. Tapi sekarang dengan adanya uh, 
uh, vaksin yang pelbagai jenis dan kita pun dah masuk kepada uh, macam Singapura sudah pun memikirkan soal third jet uh, sudah pun uh, menggalakkan kempen untuk uh, saya difahamkan setiap keluarga di Singapura telah dibekalkan dengan uh, basic uh, test kit The Menteri Besar said this today in a press conference after launching the Johor Tourism Interchange and opening ceremony of the Virtual Majestic Johor Week 2021 in Johor Bahru. Malaysia Pavilion officially opens at Expo 2020 Dubai. The government will uphold the principle of leaving no one behind. Under the recently unveiled 12th Malaysia Plan 12 MP and its quest to transform Malaysia to become a fully developed nation that will benefit all Malaysians, Prime Minister Datuk Seri Ismail Sabri Yaakob said with the theme A Prosperous, Inclusive, Sustainable Malaysia, the 12th MP will address the development disparity between states and the income gaps between social economic groups. We have the capacity for kindness, generosity, courtesy, respect, unity. Let us build on that. I'm calling for a new narrative, one that goes beyond personalities, beyond all affiliations, beyond embedded identities, and most important of all, beyond conflicting loyalties. As Malaysians, we must have unity of intent and of mutual respect. We can have differences of opinion on how we want to get to where we want to be. Our economic theories, our policies, and so on. But we must be united in our intent. He said this in his opening address at the Virtual Khazana Megatrans Forum KMF 2021 today. The Premier, who is also the Khazana Chairman, has also assured that Budget 2022, slated to be tabled in the Parliament on October 29th, will address all immediate fiscal issues with great urgency. He said for the first time ever, the government has also released a pre-budget statement to outline their intentions for the budget, and they have also distributed five public consultation papers on on a variety of structural reform issues. He added that the National Recovery Council would play a leading and active role in restoring the nation's economic health and prosperity. The government has urged East Malaysian palm oil companies to consider implementing the East Malaysia crude palm oil futures contract FIPO in their risk management strategy to remain globally competitive. Minister of Plantation Industries and Commodities Datuk Zuraida Kamarudin said the establishment of FIPO in Sabah and Sarawak will elevate the Malaysian palm oil industry to greater heights, especially in setting benchmarks for the global palm oil price. The launch of FIPO in East Malaysia, the 45% contributor to last year's CPO total production, is therefore timely for the development of the palm oil industry in Sabah and Sarawak. Companies in both states shall hedge on the opportunity to market their crude palm oil directly to Bursa Malaysia derivatives and save on the transportation costs before exportation. She said this in her pre-recorded special address at the FIPO virtual ceremony launch 2021 today. Likewise, she said countries neighbouring Sabah and Sarawak, such as China, can now purchase palm oil in East Malaysia instead. Datuk Zuraida said the implementation of FIPO in East Malaysia will also contribute to the development of the economy and provide job opportunities to the people of Sabah and Sarawak. Malaysia Pavilion at the Expo 2020 Dubai officially celebrated its grand opening today by showcasing its Rainforest Canopy Pavilion. The net zero carbon installation themed Energizing Sustainability is aimed at presenting Malaysia's sustainable vision over the 26-week Expo. 
in his speech in conjunction with the live stream opening ceremony of the Malaysia Pavilion Science, Technology and Innovation Minister, Datuk Seri Dr. Adam Baba said, Malaysia's participation in Expo 2020 Dubai highlighted the country's commitment to international collaboration and initiating dialogues on common challenges and opportunities on science, technology and innovation, STI. The minister's speech was read by Malaysia's ambassador to the UAE, Muhammad Tarid Sufian. We certainly look forward to the new and exciting market opportunities through Expo 2020 Dubai as a major platform to enhance trade, investment and cultural exchanges. This event will benefit our participating com companies, enabling them to explore new frontiers and create new markets as we strive to rejuvenate our economy. The theme of Expo 2020 Dubai is Connecting Minds, Creating the Future and runs from 1st October to 31st March 2022. Over 25 million visitors are expected at one of the biggest in-person events since the COVID-19 pandemic outbreak. Perusahaan Automobil Kedua Sendirian Berhad Pro 2 sold 119,093 vehicles between January and September 2021, a decline of 17.87% compared with 145,012 in the same period of 2020. The car makers said in comparing the second quarter of the year to the third quarter, sales plummeted by 44.6% to 21,803 units between July in September from 39,381 vehicles registered between April and June this year. Perodua President and Chief Executive Officer Datuk Zainal Abidin Ahmad said in a statement that the fourth quarter of 2021 does offer a better outlook than the previous two quarters, especially on the marked improvement in the reduction of COVID-19 cases nationwide, as well as the nearly 90% vaccination rate of the Malaysian adult population. The company also said that delivery of Perodua vehicles, however, has continued to improve for the third consecutive month with a 102% expansion to 14,160 units in September from 6,988 units in August as the supply situation gradually improves. Datuk Zainal Abidin added that the automotive supply chains have shown improvements but have yet to reach their full potential and the company will continuously work with their suppliers and dealers to further improve productivity and safety. All right, so that's it from us this evening in our top story. I'm not to allow Tun Mama Ali sort out Malacca political impasse. Join us for updates at noon at 12.30 tomorrow. I'm Shuhaida Arifin. Thank you for watching.